Hello everyone, uh, this is Klaus Aranya from the University of Tsukuba and today we are continuing with the Experiment Design for Computer Science course, Lecture 5. Uh, this is the third part of the introduction to statistical inference and today will be a slightly shorter lecture. We're going to cover two topics briefly, uh, equality and uh, non-normal testing. So the idea of this lecture uh, is to round out the talk, what we talked about the last two lectures about um, infer uh, inference. In the last two lectures, we focused on the general case where we have a sample composed of observations from an experiment that are uh, numeric estimations from uh, some, some parameter in the population. So to give a more concrete example, we used the idea, the example, for example, that the, the example, for example, that um, we are measuring the time that a program takes to solve some problem um, or the weight of some product generated by a factory. And both of these are continuous values. And we wanted to measure if they are were different from some target standard value. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, exceptions for both of these cases. So the first exception is the quality, the quality testing. So the quality testing is the idea that, well, we talked about new hypothesis and alternate hypothesis, right? And the idea was that the new hypothesis is that the value that we are observing is not different from some control value. And the alternate hypothesis is that the value is different from a control value. But what about the case where we want to do the opposite? We want to show by experiment that um, our the, the, the system that we are studying, the one para, the parameter of the system that we are studying is in fact equivalent to a certain value. So in that case, we might want to use uh, equality testing. The other thing that we're going to talk about is about non-normal data. So the idea is that we're going to briefly cover uh, some things that we can do when we are dealing with data that does not follow uh, the assumption of normality uh, that is required by the tests that we described in the previous lectures. So let's go to the first topic first, the quality testing. So uh, in the previous lectures, we introduced tests, the DZ test and the two sample test and the pair test. And all these tests, they were focused on detecting the difference between the population parameter theta and the value theta zero for a new hypothesis. So the example that we gave is that a factory uh, produces uh, like a bar of steel and our idea is that we want a method that the error of this bar of steel is smaller than the error of the standard method of the factory. So in this case our hypothesis was about the error, the difference between the mean, the target production value and the and the and the, the really produced value the, the variations in the production so we had the error for the standard um, production mode and we had the error for the alternate production mode and we wanted to show that the error for the alternate production mode was smaller than the error for the standard production mode so this is um, an, a new hypothesis on equality and an alternate hypothesis on difference, okay? However, sometimes uh, there are cases, especially in engineering, but also generally in sciences, that we want to test the equivalence of two quantities. So what kind of cases are this? So one case that we can think about is compliance testing. So compliance testing is when we want to get a certification for a new industrial process. So in this case, um, Engineering, the, the engineering discipline is a very conservative discipline. So the idea is that we're creating a new method and maybe this new method has some advantages, but the most important thing is that this new method has the same security uh, guarantees that the traditional methods have. 
So we want to show that insert for certain for certain security values for certain security parameters, our method is the same as the methods that are already guaranteed. So this would be a compliance testing. Okay. Uh, in medicine, in the pharmaceutical industry, we also have equivalence uh, for for medicines. So the idea of equivalence is to show that um, a certain uh, a certain new drug has the same effect as some other drug while showing uh, some improvement in some other area. So for instance, let's say that we have a new drug that we are using to cure headaches uh, and we want to show that this new drug has less side effects. So we can have a standard test, a standard test on the difference like we studied before to compare the side effects. But we also need an equivalence test to show that the effect on headaches is the same as the traditional drug. So this is a situation where we want to have uh, the equivalence uh, statistical test. So the idea is that when we do, when we think about the equivalence test, so we are not trying to establish that a population parameter is different from the new hypothesis, but we're trying to establish that the, ex the experiment, the alternate hypothesis that we are looking for, the strange thing is that we are testing a population that we did not expect to be the same as the traditional value, but it was the same as the traditional value after all. So we we'll, we we'll generate a new drug and we don't expect the new drug to, the, the idea is that, look, this drug is really good. This old drug is really good. It's not any drug that can have the same effect as this one. So when you get a new drug, the alternative hypothesis is that, hey, this new drug is actually as good as the old one, okay? So, in this case, so in, in the usual test, the alternative hypothesis is that the difference between the parameters of interest. Uh, so it, the new hypothesis is that without strong evidence of difference, we cannot rule out that they are equal. But here it's the opposite. Without strong evidence, we cannot show that they are equal. Okay. So in the ex in the equivalence experiment, our hypothesis is that without strong experimental evidence we cannot show that quantity A and quantity B are the same. How do we do that? Okay, so in the equivalent testing, the situation is, reserved, is reversed. The approximate equality of the two parameters is the novelty, okay? So this means that the burden of proof is not that we have to provide evidence that it's different, but we have to provide evidence that it's the same, okay? So now we need to design a statistical test that shows that it needed to be a really big coincidence for these two values to be the same, okay? So it's important to notice that in this sense, equivalent does not mean exactly the same. It does not mean that the two populations are identical, but it means that the two populations are so close that we could treat them as identical. So we need to show that there is a limit of practical significance. So there is this delta, and we have talked about this delta before. So this delta is, what is this range that in this range we say that they are the same, okay? Now, if we think about this range to show that they are the same, we can design a procedure to show that two samples for a certain parameter uh, that, that a sample for a certain parameter can provide evidence that this parameter is equivalent to some target value uh, within this margin. Okay. So to do that, we're going to use a different term that is similar but not exactly the same. So we're going to talk about another term that appears a lot in medicine that is called non-inferiority, okay? So what is non-inferiority? The idea of non-inferiority is that we don't know if this is equal, we don't know if it's better, but we know that these two quantities 
this new, this new value is not inferior to the old one. So going back to the headache, maybe this, this, this drug is as good as the old one, maybe this drug is better than the old one, but we know that this drug is not worse than the old one when it comes to how many headaches it cures, okay? So for a non-inferiority test, we can declare that a process is not worse than a standard one if we have enough evidence to conclude that the performance of the proposed process is no more than delta units worse than the standard. So our proof here, our statistical proof here, is that given the evidence, this new process, if it's, it, it, it's, if it's worse than the old one, it's worth at most by delta units, okay? And if we think about, okay, it's delta units worse or better than that, we can use a standard test, okay? So in this case, it's a standard test with a one-sided alternative. And this uh, one-sided alternative would be, oh, let's say that delta equals to zero or delta equals to a very small value. This leads us to this idea, okay, of no inferiority and no and superior. So in the traditional study that we saw before, okay, we have the null hypothesis zero. And if we find, so let me get the pen here. Oh, okay. So this is the traditional hypothesis. And let's say that we are measuring something where the higher the number is, the better. In this case, this here is that we cannot reject the new hypothesis because we see here that our confidence interval falls within the new hypothesis. And here we can show when we get, if we get a result like this, our statistical test will say that, hey, the new method is superior to the old one. Opposite, in the opposite side, if we're doing a test, if we're doing an experiment where a small value is better, then to establish the superiority, we need our confidence interval to fall under the new hypothesis value. Now, this gives us a study of, this gives us an idea of what would an equivalence study look like. So if this is a superiority, this is a superior, this is a superiority study. And this is, uh, sorry, this is a superiority study for plus, and this is a superiority study for less. We can think of an equivalence study where we have our minus alpha and our plus alpha as a study where we want to show that our confidence interval falls in the boundaries of this alpha, okay? Also, we can compare the superiority study with the no inferiority study. So in the no inferiority study, uh, we show here that this is the null hypothesis and this is the minus delta. And you see that in both cases, our uh, confidence interval falls in the null hypothesis. But in this second case here, the confidence interval also falls close to the minus delta. So the second case, we do not establish the no inferiority because maybe the true value is under this delta. And in this case, we can establish the infer no inferiority. So according to our statistics, the true value must be above minus delta. And the same thing for the opposite, right? So to show no inferiority, we define a plus delta interval and we must show that our estimation of the true value of the parameter is below this plus delta, okay? So how can we use this? Uh, how can we use these ideas of no inferiority for uh, positive values and no inferiority for negative values to define an equivalence study, okay? So, The quick idea for equivalence study is then to observe the confidence interval for these delta values, okay? So we say that we can est establish the equivalence if we define some delta, so for we, start in, 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 if we define some delta value, uh, 
and we show that the confidence interval for our um, the confidence interval for our um, our parameter that we are observing falls in this interval. Okay, so if we look at the traditional testing, in the traditional testing, we as we uh, say that uh, a quantity is different from the new hypothesis if the confidence interval does not touch the new hypothesis. In the equivalence testing, we have two thresholds. We have an upper threshold and we have a lower threshold. And for us to establish interf um, for us to establish equivalence, it's not enough. It's not even important that we touch the middle. We don't care about the middle. We care about the upper boundary and we care about the lower boundary. So as long as our value, had, as long as there is enough evidence that our value of interest falls between the upper boundary and the lower boundary, then we say, okay, we establish the equivalence between these two values. Okay. So how do we define this? So this is like a, a general, uh, how do you say? This is an intuitive description of the equivalence study. But how can we transform this uh, intuition into an actual test? So the one approach that we're gonna study today is the two one-sided tests, okay? So in the two one-sided tests, we have two, one, two tests that are one-sided, so that's why the name. So it's two one uh, single mean tests. And in one test, we're gonna test, we're gonna do a standard test to show that the value under study is above the new, the, the, the target value minus uh, delta. And the second test is that the tar value under study is below the target value plus delta. Okay, so we define here our target value. So let me just mark this. So we define here our target value. So let's say our target value is mu. Okay, and our new hypothesis is that our new hypothesis is that this difference uh, mu minus the value that was, sorry, uh, the, mu, the mu minus the value that was observed is bigger than a certain, uh, a certain delta, okay? Now, because this is, in, this is the absolute difference, uh, this splits the hypothesis testing in two. So the first hypothesis that we are going to test is this one, H1. So the new hypothesis of H1 is that the difference is equal to minus, uh, minus delta. And the alternate hypothesis is that the difference is bigger than minus delta. In other words, because, because it's minus, it means that uh, it's actually closer to our target value. And the alternate hypothesis is that here, the difference in, in, in the difference is equal to delta and alternate hypothesis that the difference is smaller than delta, okay? So we do two tests with the same confidence and the same power. And if both tests reject the new hypothesis, so if the first test reject the new hypothesis, it's saying that the difference is, the, 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 the value is bigger than uh, uh, mu minus delta. So the first hypothesis, it says, the value is more than mu minus delta. The second hypothesis is the value is smaller than mu plus delta. So if we, if we reject the new hypothesis of mu minus delta and we reject the new hypothesis of mu plus delta, then the truth value must be in the middle, okay? So that's the idea of this test. All right. So let's, we observe this like this. So here we can see how it looks like. So we have here our minus delta. We have here our plus delta, okay? And here the alpha, the error, okay? The, the type one error is if our 
process. If our real value, uh, if a re real value was here or here, we would have this probability of type one error. And if our true value falls here, we're gonna have this probability of a type two error, okay? And our target value is here. So we want to find uh, some value for our experiment that falls between this, oh, sorry, between here, right? The minus and the plus and minus delta. So, so let's, uh, in, the, in the same way, uh, so that was for one uh, sample. Now let's say that we have two samples. We have the, the data for the drug one and the data for the drug two that we did uh, in a study. And we want to show that they are the same. Uh, the difference, it's, it's exactly, it's not very different, the testing. It's the same idea as the two sample test that we saw on the last lecture. So here, our hypothesis is on the difference between the first parameter and the second parameter. So here, uh, our new hypothesis is that the difference between the two parameters is bigger than delta. And the alternate hypothesis is that the difference between the two parameters is smaller than delta. So we break again our hypothesis into two one-sided hypothesis. So we test the two one-sided hypothesis. And if we reject both of the new hypotheses, uh, we can say that our test indicates that the two samples come from uh, distributions with the same parameter theta, okay? So let's see a numerical example. So here we have an industrial certification. So we have a laboratory that is creating this very, very smart gun shield. So you have a gun and you put a shield in front of you and the shield will protect you from bullets. Okay, I don't know how smart that is. Uh, it doesn't sound very smart, but there are some people that sell that. So uh, anyway, the laboratory has to provide evidence that this shield is, um, is effective given a certain equipment. So uh, they have the shield and they want to certificate that the shield uh, actually um, defends as much as it's said to defend. So they will do a certain calibration procedure with some reference equipment. They will shoot at the shield and they will look at the size of the holes, okay? So the certification demands that the whole area generated by this procedure be the same as the one for the reference equipment. And the holes should have deviations no greater than four millimeters. So they shoot at the shield, they measure the hole uh, with the equipment and the status. So they say, okay, we're gonna shoot from this distance using these weapons and we're gonna measure the hole. And then they see if the size is different, okay? Now, uh, they know from the, 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 the company that is trying to get the certification, they know from uh, previous measurements that these deviations can be estimated as the error of the laboratory, that's the laboratory that's gonna do the test, is about five millimeters, and the error of the reference is about 10 millimeters. And they defined that they want the error levels to be, they want a confidence uh, of the test to be 0 0.01, and they want the power of the test to be 0 0.1. So this is actually a very low power test, right? So uh, how do we do this? So the first thing that needs to be done is to calculate the sample size. Uh, you, you always have to estimate and sample size. And in the future class, uh, we're going to discuss these details uh, about. But I'm just showing here the calculation, the user of a function. There are many uh, sample size calculators for several tests. So here is a function that calculates the sample size for the two one sided um, test. And they added here all the data that they wanted. So, okay, we want an alpha of 0 0.01, we want a beta of 0 0.01, and we want a difference. Uh, of no more than 0 0.5 millimeters. That was the difference that we stated that the, inter the difference of interest, okay? And then we have the standard deviation for sample one is five, standard deviation for sample two is 10, okay? So this gives that they need 145 observations for each group, 
So because we're doing two tasks, we usually need a little bit more observation. So they're gonna have to do 120, 145 shots for the laboratory and 145 shots for the reference to compare. So they compare that and they execute the analysis. So the analysis, as you can see here, we are using the same t-test function that we used for the one sample test in the last class, except that here we're doing this for two, okay? So we have one t-test where we're testing if it's the alternate, the alternate hypothesis is less than the less than the, 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 the less than the difference of four, okay? So the difference here is four. So we have to see if the difference is less than four. And in the second test, we want to see if the difference is more than minus four. So we do one test, is the difference less than four? And the second test, is the difference more than minus four? Okay? And we see that in the first test, we got a p-value of 0, 0. 0. 0.003. So we reject the first new hypothesis. And in the second test, we got an even smaller uh, p-value. So we reject the second new hypothesis. So because we reject the first new hypothesis and we reject the second new hypothesis, we can say that the two values are equivalent. Of course, it's important to observe this. So we plot uh, two confidence intervals here. Uh, sorry, we plot the confidence interval of the difference. So the confidence interval of the difference is minus 0 0.5 to 3. So we see that our confidence interval is between the two limits that we draw and we draw the box plots for the two and we see that uh, they add, indeed do look quite similar okay of course uh, after we do the experiment we need to think about the um how do you say uh the assumptions of the test so the first assumption of the t-test is the assumption of normality so here we are plotting the qq plots for the laboratory data against the quantiles and the reference data against the quantiles. And we can see that in general, both data follows, uh, are no, follows the, no distribu the, the normal distribution. So we cannot reject the normality assumption here. And here we're just illustrating the use of the uh, Derby-Watson test to test for independence. Um, or in this case, if we assume that the tests are done one after the other after the other, uh, this plot would show a, a correlation if there was a dependence. So if we shot many times and the equipment showed a temporal dependence uh, on the results, it would show on the Darwin Water test. But just remember that uh, if you change the order of the data, then you will, the, the, the result of the Darwin Walton test would be completely different. So we need to make sure that your uh, general assumptions when designing the test will guarantee a certain degree of independence. And you can just do a quick Darwin Watson test to see if you are not surprised by anything that you did not take into account during the, um, during the experiment design stage. Okay. All right, so this was the first part of the lecture. So just to summarize, to do an equivalence test, the idea, one simple way to do it is to choose two one-sided tests. So we do one single test to see that the value is above the key value minus a delta, and another test to show that the value is below the key value plus the same delta. And if both tests are rejected, it means that it's not below the threshold and it's not above the threshold. So it must be uh, equivalent to the value of interest. Okay, now we're gonna give a quick break and then we're gonna come back for the second part of the lecture, no normal data. <laughs>